Welcome to this webinar on understanding and using feedback constructively. So you want to know more about understanding feedback. This presentation is great for those who are doing a dissertation or investigation research project, want to learn how to use feedback to their advantage, are doing any academic research, want to avoid misunderstandings in receiving feedback, and want to learn how to self-evaluate. Here's what we'll cover in this video. First, we'll look into what we mean by feedback. We will talk about how academic supervisors expect you to use the feedback they provide you with and give you a few valuable tips on how to receive feedback. We'll then look into how to deal with and respond to negative feedback and cover how you can use feedback to be self-reflective. Lastly, we'll talk about how to be specific and clear when self-evaluating and reflecting. So let us get started. First off, what do we mean by the word feedback? Feedback describes all helpful information about your performance, which is used as a basis for improvement. You can receive feedback from just about anyone, but when it comes to your research project, your main source of feedback is most likely going to be your academic supervisor. Giving feedback is basically effective listening, or in the case of your research project, reading too. Your audience interacts with the material you present and gives you their thoughts on it. So feedback is all about constructive criticism that is intended to improve the current standing of your work. It is there to give you food for thought and is intended to be helpful. Feedback isn't about being negative or criticising you. So how do academic supervisors expect you to use feedback during your research project? Depending on your research project, there are several points during the project when you might receive feedback. You might receive feedback on your project during the project proposal stage, during one or two milestones partway through the project, or when preparing for your project presentation, or where your tutor assessor or supervisor could give you feedback. You should never dismiss feedback, but incorporate it into your work. You should always see feedback as a means of professional development. This is how you learn, so it's best to see it as an opportunity for improvement. Be open to change. Get big or small, everything can be improved, so give it a try. This is intended to help improve your research project. Most of all, your academic supervisors want you to understand where their feedback comes from. They only want to help you. They understand how much work you put into your project and want you to get the very best out of it, either before your final submission or for future projects. Why do we care about feedback in education and work? Feedback is very important because it is critical for improvement. It's usually by hearing how others perceive your work that you learn how to do well. It fosters personal and professional development because it allows for continued learning. Through feedback, you get new and relevant input from expert sources that can provide new ideas and point out which parts might need new thought. Basically, feedback provides a new perspective on your work. Your supervisors will also be able to point out gaps in your reasoning that would undermine your arguments if not addressed. Perhaps most importantly, when done right, feedback can motivate and inspire you to continue your work and come up with new ideas. Here are a few tips for receiving feedback. It's always best to seek feedback early. This way you can prevent miscommunication and know that you and your supervisor are on board with where your project is heading. It can also provide you with new ideas on what else you might incorporate while it's still easy for you to do so. You should always evaluate the source of the feedback and how it was offered. While much of your feedback will come from your supervisors, you may also receive some suggestions from friends and family. You should always think about whether the person offering advice knows your entire work and can imagine the influence of their suggestion on other parts of your project. Listen carefully. Make sure you understand what your supervisors mean by their suggestions. It's always helpful to ask questions if you're unsure. Do not automatically assume your critic is either right or wrong. 
Instead of deciding straight away what to do, you should try to understand why a suggestion was made. This will allow you to find the root of any possible weaknesses in your work. Lastly, do not passively accept critical feedback. Feedback is always meant to improve your work, so you should always think about it carefully. Now that we have covered some general tips, let us break down the process of receiving feedback. Here are six steps which we suggest you follow whenever you receive feedback. This will help you understand and apply it. One, stop your first reaction. It's always useful to stay as neutral as possible and find out what exactly your supervisor means before allowing yourself to react or have an emotional response to feedback. Two, remember the benefit of getting feedback. Keep in mind that feedback is there to help you improve. It's not meant as negative criticism of your work. Three, listen for understanding. It is very important that you find out just what your supervisor means so you can directly address the root of the problem. Give them time to talk or if your feedback comes in written form, make sure to read it carefully and read it more than once to truly understand what they are trying to convey. Four, say thank you. It may seem obvious or prescriptive, but giving as well as receiving feedback is not always easy. Remember that your supervisor gave you quite a bit of their time to read your work or listen to your ideas. This will help you appreciate the value of receiving feedback. Five, ask questions. In order to truly understand your supervisor's point, it's often helpful to ask questions as this will prompt them to elaborate further. Six, request time to follow up. If you receive your feedback before you submit your project, there may be a chance for a further conversation with your supervisor after you have had time to implement the changes, if your research project allows. This will give you a chance to get on the same page with your supervisor and see whether you understood what they mean. Not all feedback you're going to get is going to paint your work in an all positive light, but negative feedback is nothing to be afraid of. In fact, it can be all the more useful for your development as it points out what can still be improved and needs more thought. So let us have a look at how to deal with negative feedback. Perhaps the most important tip is to not get defensive. Listen to your supervisor without immediately planning your reply. This way you are more likely to truly understand what they are suggesting. Ask yourself honestly whether the comments are accurate. While it can be hard to hear that something you have worked on hard is not exactly spot on, it will be better for your personal development to understand where the weaknesses lie and learn from your mistakes. Distinguish between facts and opinions. You may not agree with all negative feedback that you get. If you are not sure whether you disagree because it stings or because you have reason on your side, analyse your supervisor's comments. Are they based on fact that cannot be disputed or are they more about style? Ask questions to make sure you understand. This point is all the more important when the feedback you're receiving is negative. Asking questions will allow your supervisor to frame their suggestions in a different way that may be less negative and it will also buy you time to deal with your initial reaction and start seeing things objectively. Try to see your work from your supervisor's perspective. Feedback is always meant to be helpful, so ask yourself what the supervisor wants you to do with their suggestions. And always, always remember not to take it personally. Don't make broad assessments of your own character based on one mistake. Feedback is never meant to attack you as a person. Your supervisor just wants your work to be as best as it can be. So try to see negative feedback as an opportunity to learn. Now that we know how to deal with negative feedback in general, let us look at how to respond to feedback with which you don't agree. Focus on specific examples. Using one specific example to focus on will help you demonstrate to your supervisor why you made certain choices and why you think it would be worse if done in a different way. Always remember that your supervisor doesn't know why you did things in a certain way. What may have come as a first thought to them could have already been considered in detail by you as you worked on your project. So if you have good reasons to disagree with their suggestions, then take the time to explain your thought process. 
Ask others for positive feedback if none has been offered. It can be off-putting to only receive negative feedback. Not everyone will necessarily take the approach of positive reinforcement, so ask others. It can be anyone, your friends, family or teachers, to have a look at your work. Just because your supervisor didn't focus on the good doesn't mean that there isn't lots of great work in your project. Say thank you. It may not be the first thing on your mind after receiving negative feedback, but it's important to keep in mind that the other party still took their time to think about your work. Especially if you don't think you will be implementing the changes they advised, it's important to let them know that you still appreciate their effort. When used correctly, feedback can teach you a lot about yourself. Here are a few questions you should always ask yourself when you receive feedback. Does your critic have a point? Sometimes it's difficult to look at your work without the backdrop of all the research you have done and all the thought you have put into it. So ask yourself whether it's possible that some of the feedback you receive may be based on the fact that you're too close to your project to see it objectively. Could this feedback be applied more broadly to your work? A mistake can often point to a larger underlying problem, so you should always think about why you have made it and whether this is something that you would know how to avoid in the future. Have you ever received this kind of feedback before? For example, if your supervisor reminds you to avoid using phrases that refer to yourself in academic writing, is it possible that you often use personal biases as reasons? It's always useful to see every mistake in a broader context, as it will help you realise and address your weaknesses as a writer. So really, you should always see feedback as an opportunity to learn and improve, rather than a criticism. Mistakes and missteps can reveal a lot about you as a thinker, so never disregard feedback without carefully considering what it says about your technique. Let us now look at how to use feedback that is focused on a specific point within a dissertation research project. Here is a paragraph on the research question, is it smart to invest in developing technology for teaching purposes? Have a look at the text and then read the feedback given by the supervisor. While the paragraph makes an interesting point, it is not entirely clear what is meant by the phrase get access to education which in turn makes it difficult to understand the term digital classroom. The writer also hasn't outlined what they mean by advances in technology or been very specific. In order to improve the quality of this argument, the writer could elaborate on their point. Now read the edited paragraph. The extra sentence explains that getting access to education was meant as a reference to students who cannot attend school in person because they live too far away. The student also added what they meant by advances in technology. Simply adding a couple of sentences has strongly improved the overall argument and answered a question that many readers would have had otherwise. Note the use of referencing too. Sometimes you may receive feedback that is less specific to a point, but addresses larger or more overarching issues such as the structure of your literature review or discussion section. As the author, it may be difficult for you to see the structure of your writing clearly, as you'll likely have read it many a time. So this is a common problem that is brought up in feedback. When you receive feedback such as this, you may want to think about the process to adopt in order to address the feedback. In the case of this example, you could go back and think about how to structure your work by theme. For example, here is a short process that you could undertake or checklist to use. Read your literature review or discussion section. Once again, familiarise yourself with all the research you have done. Break it down into individual themes and make a list of these themes for your overview. Think about which themes are easiest to link to each other. This will create a logical flow in your writing. Reorder your list based on your previous step. Write your new and improved literature review or discussion section. And very importantly, look for a chance to explain to your supervisor how you have improved your writing. Lastly, here are a few final tips for using and understanding feedback. 
always try implementing changes before dismissing them. Even if you don't agree with some of the suggestions your supervisor makes, it can't hurt to imagine what your work would be like if you followed their advice. You can only know that you disagree when you have envisioned both options. Make sure you understand the feedback. Don't simply accept changes or read feedback without thinking about it. If you do, you may get it wrong. Don't take it personally. All feedback is meant to improve your technique, so think of it as a lesson. Learn from your mistakes. It will make you a far better writer. What are the next steps and further resources for you? If your feedback came in written form, ask follow-up questions to help you understand how you can improve and give you a chance to ask questions. Ask for input from others if you are struggling to see your supervisor's point. They might be able to explain your supervisor's comments and help you address any points in your work. Lastly, use our steps for dealing with feedback. You are now all set to make the most of your feedback. Thanks for listening.